Today on Unpacked. I put the memory card in my friend's phone and on that memory card, I found the most disturbing pictures of myself. That's when I realized that this guy had not only been poisoning me, but this guy had also been roofing me. The pictures that are on the memory card are were so graphic, man, they were so scary. It was pictures of me laying in bed, butt naked. I don't know how many women this guy has done this to. Mm. I don't know if, the, if I'm the last woman that he's ever going to do this mm. to. A tale of revenge porn. Can you imagine somebody that you are intimate with sharing your intimacy with the world? Today's guest is here to share her story. Let's unpack. Charlotte Gumbi, also known as Charlie Hustle, is a Soweto-raised artist who runs her own NGO. After experiencing some unfortunate events in her previous relationship, her decision to end it led to her being publicly humiliated as an act of revenge. This is her story. Let's unpack. Hi, Charlotte. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Greetings, one queen. Thank you so much for having me. So take me back to what it was like meeting this person that you were with. What was that like? <laughs> funny enough, actually, it's a very funny story. It was back in 2015. Yes. I was living in Dobsonville at the time. Mm. It was at night, around about uh, past 10 mm. in the evening. And I was coming from the garage with my friend. Mm. So this guy walks up to me and he wanted to talk to me. And I remember my friend saying, hi, Joe, me, don't talk to that guy. He looks crazy. Yes. And he had this huge smile, like the Joker kind of smile on his face. Yeah. And I was like, oh, Shane, he looks like he really wants to talk to me. Yes. So I decided to give him my number. And that's how we started talking. So you guys started talking and then what happens? So we started talking, chatting on WhatsApp about a week later. I went to see him at his place because he doesn't stay very far from where I was staying. Mm. So we'd spend time together, watch movies together, mm. you know, we're getting to know each other. Mm. Would you say you guys um, became official early on? I actually would. I yes, would, yes. yes. It, it became very serious very quickly yes. because he made it clear right away that he, he um, he's actually been single for a while. Mm. He said that he's been looking for a girl like me. Yes. He even said things like, um, what did he say? He said, you know, I used to look at girls like you on Instagram and mm. I, I used to feel like, oh, I wish I could date a girl like you. Wow. So already I was like, okay, but whatever. So that, in hindsight, was some of the things that he said like red flags to you? Actually, they should have been red flags. Yes. They should have been. Yes, you know. yes. Okay, so what was then the dating like? Okay, so the, the, the dating at first... I mean, he was just very excited at first. He, like, mm. really liked me. A little too much, actually. Mm. In the first week of dating, he was already telling me he loves me. Wow. And I was like, but we've just met. We yes. barely know each other. Mm. But I still thought, you know what, let's get to know each other a little mm. better. Mm. And we spent more and more time together. But things started to change very quickly, too. So what were the first uh, things that you noticed that were off? Firstly, the, the 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 fact that this guy, he, I don't know, I just I feel like he was more obsessed yes. than um, in love with me. And I'm a very big tomboy, you know. Yes. Don't don't look at how I'm dressed today. This yeah. is all for you. This is yeah. all for unpacked. <laughs> Thank you. But I'm a huge tomboy. Yes. And I spent a lot of time with my brother because I was staying with my mom and my brother. Yeah. So I spent a lot of time with my brother and his friends. Mm. And this guy already had a problem with the fact that I was such a tomboy. He didn't understand why do I have to dress boyish? Why must I spend so much time with my brother? Mm. Why must I spend so much time with my friends? And he was already within the first two weeks, I think, doing things like just showing up unannounced. Oh, and this is Gohai. Yes. And what was your response to that? I, I let him know right away that I do not appreciate that because this is not my house. It's my mom's house. Yes. I'm a Zulu girl. In my culture, you don't just show up. Yes. If my parents meet you for the first time when you are coming to um, talk about uh, Lobola negotiations. Yes, yes, yes. So it was a little bit awkward. It was. It really was. What was the response of your mom? Uh, my mom didn't know. She didn't know. She was obviously in the house. You know, yes. he'd come, he'd call me, let me know he's outside. Or he'd ask maybe one of the kids in the neighborhood to come and call me. Yes. So I did let him know that th this can't happen. Because yes. like I said, this is not my house. Because yes. this is being disrespectful now. Imagine a guy just coming to knock at your house saying, hey, I'm looking for Charlie. Like, who are you? Yes, what gives yes. You, what, what gives you the right to even do that? Yes, yes. Okay, so what were some of the other things that you noticed that he would do? 
Um, other things, he was... When he was sober, he was a nice person. Yeah. But whenever he drank, he'd become very aggressive. Mm. He was the type of person who would have friends over. Friends would come buy alcohol. But as soon as he's had something to drink, he becomes very mean. Yes. He chases friends away. He did it with me, actually, the first time we chilled together drinking. What? And I left. I walked away because he was really mean. And he came after me. He ran after me. And he apologized. Yes. I even told him that it doesn't make sense that when you're sober, you're one person. But as soon as you get drunk, you're this mm. mean, nasty person who just pushes people away. Yes. I remember this, there was this one time, I'm, I'm not very big on alcohol. Yeah. There was one time he went out drinking with his friends mm. um, and then he came back. I was at his place. I told him, it's cool, man, you can go. He came back and he expected me to entertain him. And I was like, but I'm sober, so I don't understand why do yes. I now need to entertain you? And he literally pulled me from the bed by my leg. So wow. really, there was a red flag. I was like, okay, if this is the type of person you are, then I can't. Because if you can grab me like that, what's going to stop you from choking me or yes. punching me um, some other time? Yes. So what was the, the last straw, you know, or let, let me actually say before we get to the last straw, at what point in the relationship did he, um, you know, did, did, let me say that both of you start encouraging nudes and when did that come about? Um, that was also very on in the relationship, I yeah. lie, because... I think probably less than a month after mm. dating, maybe two, three weeks, he already started asking me for those pictures. Mm. And I told him that I'm not comfortable doing that because my biggest fear is having my nudes end up on social mm. media, end up on the internet, because a lot of huge social media platforms have pages yes. of girls' naked pictures. And most of those pictures were not even uploaded by the girls. Yes. Some of the girls don't even know that the pictures are, are up there. Yes. So I told him that I'm not comfortable. But obviously, because I trusted him and mm. he got me to trust him, he told me, no, don't worry, your pictures are safe with me. Yes. I will not share them with anybody, not friends, not family, nobody. Yes, yes. So you shared pictures with him, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with mm. doing that. It's somebody that you're intimate with, somebody that you're in a relationship with. And... Um, uh, at the time, that's what made sense mm -hmm. for, for you and for him. So what was the beginning of the end of the relationship? The beginning of the end was three months into the relationship. Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy became more and more aggressive and I just felt like he's obsessed with me. Yes. He literally wanted to see me every single day. Yeah. And I guess I obviously didn't like him as much as he liked me because honest yes. truth is... I'm, I'm a huge romantic myself. Yes. If I'm really in love with someone, I'd love to see them all the time. Yes. But I also believe that I need to give the person their space if they mm. need it. This person refused to give me my space. Mm. He would show up unannounced. He would call me odd hours. Mm. I would be maybe visiting family, visiting my sister. Mm. And before midday, this person would have called me five times. Wow. You know wow. what I mean? So already it was like, but you know I'm with my family. Give me space. Yes. Why Why do you always freak out when I'm not in front of you? Yes, yes, yes. So you, you know, you eventually ended it. Mm -hmm. How tried. did that happen? I, I tried to end the relationship. Mm. I think that that was after I came back from my sister's place and this guy had been harassing me the whole entire weekend. Yes. And even my sister didn't understand. She was like, okay, I understand that you're in a new relationship, but mm. does this person not understand that you're with family, you're with yes. him every other day? So I tried to end the relationship over um, WhatsApp. Mm. I tried to end the relationship over SMS. Mm. He did not take no for an answer. What did he say? He just, he just wouldn't take no for an answer, man. Like, I don't know, he kind of acted like it was a joke, like he didn't yes. take it seriously. Yes. You know, like, we can work this out. I'm like, there's nothing to work out. You and I are clearly two very different people. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. It's not you, it's me. Yes. I, I just don't like you as, as much as you like me, and mm. I don't like the way that you treat me. And also, you're giving me some really red flags, you know? Yes. I started even to think, maybe my friend was right. Maybe this guy is a little crazy. Yes, yes, what she did say. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so what happens after that? So I tried to end the relationship, and same day, if not the following day, he showed up at my house mm. unannounced. I asked him to leave. He mm. refused to leave, and I even had to get a neighbor involved. Mm. I had to ask one of the guys next door to ask this person to leave because I was starting to feel unsafe now. Mm. He lost his mind. He became very upset. He left. As soon as he left, I think probably less than 15 minutes later, mm. that's when my phone started blowing up. Mm. My phone was blowing up because uh, my sister, people that live on my streets, people that have me on WhatsApp, started sending me screenshots because this guy started sending them naked pictures of me. Wow. Started sending them naked pictures of me, telling them how disgusting I am. And besides just revenge porn, he also body shared me because I've got scars on my body that I've been able to um, hide all my life. Yes. So he went onto the internet, went onto Google. He Googled pictures of girls with scars, scars even worse than mine. He called yes. me ugly, he called me horrible, he called me a monster. 
He called me all sorts of horrible names, man. So he starts sending these things to your people. Mm -hmm. And what was your first response and reaction? At first, I was confused. I was like, okay, th this can't really be happening. Yes. You know, like somebody, somebody slapped me. I must be sleeping. Yes. You know? And at first I thought, no, maybe it's a prank when it was just people that I knew through him. Mm. Next thing, people on my street started sending me screenshots. Next thing, my sister started screening, sending me screenshots because my sister was like, but what's going on with you and this guy? Yes. He's now sending me pictures of your private parts. Like, what's wow. up with that? And these were the type of pictures that I had never, ever sent any guy before. Yes. I told him that I'm very scared. I have yes. this fear when it comes to taking these type of pictures. Yes. And there was even this one screenshot from one of the girls where he said, I have everything she's ever sent me backed up in my Gmail, so this can get worse. Wow. Yeah. So what was he telling people, other than, you know, um, trashing you to people, what else was he saying to them? That, that's all he was saying to them. He was just mm -hmm. trashing me. He was calling me, I don't know if I can say slut. Yeah. He was calling me a slut, calling me the B word, calling me any name you can think of, telling them about how, I don't know, he says, I'm... I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm too good for him, you know? Yes. Telling them about my scars, about these scars that nobody else knows. Wow. Telling them that I'm a monster and that nobody else is going to love me. Wow, wow. In that time, is he trying to communicate with you as well? He was trying to communicate with me. Saying what? He was, he, he was swearing at me. He was swearing at me. He was harassing me. He was bullying me as if this is someone I've never dated. Wow. As, this, this, mm. as if, I don't know, we've always been enemies. Like, he was just really angry. I think mm. this was just his way of showing me that I hurt him by ending the relationship. Yes. So what's the next thing that happens? So the next thing that happened is I was depressed. Mm. I was very depressed for about three days. I did not leave my room. Mm. I did not get out of bed. I did not know how I was going to face the world. Now mm. people know things about me. Now people have seen me naked, pictures mm. that they're not supposed to see. Mm. I don't know what to do. But I decided I need to stand up and do something about it because mm. it might get worse. Because yes. I was even thinking, what happens if he shares these pictures on Facebook? Yes. What if he shares these pictures on Twitter, on Instagram? Mm. You know, because mm. he knows that I have quite a following on social media. Yes. So yes. I went to a police station. I, tr I tried to open a case. But now at the time, revenge porn had not yet been criminalized. So yes. even the police didn't know what, what exactly, exactly yes. what kind of case this is. Yes, yes. So what did they say to you at the station? The only thing they could advise me is that I should get a, a protection order. Mm. That's all that they said. You can get a protection order. I'm like, but what about harassment? Is mm. this not harassment? Isn't there some sort of law against mm. someone being like being able to share someone else's naked pictures. Yes, yes. And and they obviously didn't have a response to that. They did not. Yeah. I just got the protection order and him and I, he was summoned and we had to appear in front of the magistrates. And in front of the magistrates, he just apologized. He said he was sorry, he was just angry. But he was only saying that for the magistrate. To me, he didn't say a word. So what was it like having to see him again in court? <sighs> I think you can probably hear that my voice is shaking mm. a bit. Just, it, it wasn't a nice feeling. It wasn't a nice mm. feeling also because I could feel, man, I could feel his energy. Mm. I could feel that this guy shows no remorse. This guy yes. doesn't feel bad for what he's done. He's only saying this now because he's panicking, because he's yes. thinking, oh my God, what if I get locked up? Because while he was harassing me before I went to the cops, I threatened him. Yes. I said I was going to go to the cops and he actually said, go. Oh, go, let's see wow. what will happen. Yes, yes. So now um, um, in that court case, was, was a court order actually granted from him being summoned? No, not necessarily a court order. I don't know if you can call it a as court order. As in a protection order, order yes, is a court, granted yes, yes, uh, granted. because of the court case. Yes, yes, yes I was yes. granted a protection yes. order. And what, was, what did it stipulate? It just stipulated that he's not allowed to contact me. Mm. He's not allowed to speak about me on social media. Mm. But that was about it. And did he follow the order? He did follow the order because he didn't contact me after that. Yes. However, he carried on saying bad things about me. Mm. He carried on telling people that this girl is crazy. This girl is making things up. I did not send these pictures to anybody, even though wow. he had sent pictures to yes. people. But he just basically now tries to make me look like I was crazy and yes. making stuff up. And how did you respond to that? <sighs> I don't even know, man. I was just really depressed, I won't lie. But more than anything, I just felt like I'm tired of being abused. Mm. I, I felt like this guy has tried to strip me of my dignity. Yes. But I also felt like maybe, maybe this is a wake up call. Maybe mm. there's a reason why these things keep happening. This yes. took me all the way back to when I was seven years old, when mm. I was raped. Mm. I was raped when I was seven. I was raped when I was in high school. Mm. And I was also raped, I was almost raped again when I was 10 mm. by one of my uncles. 
So I decided that I'm tired of hiding behind the shame of the abuse. Mm. I've decided that my story is probably the story of so many other women. Mm. And that's when I decided to start my organization, mm. start speaking about this publicly and hopefully make a difference mm. some mm. way, somehow. So, I mean, I, I want to, to, to touch on the part of the, of the revenge porn element, mm -hmm. which at the time wasn't mm -hmm. criminalized. But did the judge have anything to say specifically about that situation? Not even, actually. To be honest with you, the judge didn't even speak about that. He didn't even mm. mention that part. So yeah. All he said was, this guy needs to stay away from me. We yes. need to stay away from each other. He can't contact me. But he didn't say anything else. Mm. Another thing that I had also mentioned was the fact that at the time all of this, all of this was happening, the guy, when we were dating, he wasn't, he wasn't working, he was looking for a job. Yes. He didn't have a phone. I had recently bought a new phone, so mm. I gave him my old phone. Yes. Now, can you imagine him sending people all these messages from my phone? Wow. Calling me up, harassing me, calling me all these uh, horrible names. Wow. On the same phone that I gave him yes. to help him um, find a job. So yes. I, I even tried to go to small claims courts yes. so that I can at least maybe get him to bring my phone back. Yes. And I even tried to get him to delete that Gmail because yes. he did mention on one of the screenshots that he's got the images backed up on his Gmail. Yes. But the judge also didn't say anything about that, even yes. though I brought it up. Yes. And in hindsight, when you uh, look at what the, the, the law is right now, mm -hmm. what do you make of the case had it uh, happened today? I honestly wish, I honestly wish that we knew all these things. I yes. honestly wish that revenge porn had been criminalized. Mm. I honestly wish that our police services and people that are just part of the law, I wish they were educated more because mm. at the time, nobody really understood. Yes. I just felt like th this should be, I don't know, this, this should be some sort of criminal offense, but nobody, not the judge, no social worker, nobody yes. understood what this was. Yes. People yes. were like, okay, this is wrong, but are people doing this? And I told them, yes, yes I'm not the only one. Yes. These things have been happening for the longest time, yes. you know? So yes. I wish I knew back then what I know now. Mm. I wish I had rights back then, mm. the mm. same rights that I have now. So let's fast forward um, because then eventually he stopped. And um, I'm assuming from that point on, you haven't heard from him ever again. Mm. But obviously you can't undo the mm -hmm. damage that he did do. Um, did you, you didn't hear from him, but what did you do for yourself to get past what you went through with him? Okay, so like I said, I started my organization. Yes. I decided to register my nonprofit's human rights organization yes. called Humanity Must Rise. Mm. Through Humanity Must Rise, I started speaking at schools, speaking mm. to young girls, because these are not things that just happen to grown women mm. like you and me. Mm. I'm sure you've heard cases yourself of young girls trending on social media mm. because the boyfriend was recording a video, yes. because the boyfriend took pictures. Yes. So I just use this as a chance to create awareness, mm. to try and hopefully educate others, and yes. to try and warn women that mm. you're allowed to send these pictures, you've grown. I mean, even yes. kids send these pictures. But when you do, try to be smart about it. Like, mm. don't put your picture, don't put your face in these pictures, yes. and don't don't trust just anybody with these pictures. Mm. And one thing I always try to advise young girls, one thing I'm trying to do myself and young boys, mm. I tell young girls that if a boy really likes you, like mm. he says he does, he will respect you. He will not ask you for those type of pictures. Yes. And if you do receive pictures like that from your girlfriend, respect her enough to delete them because phones get lost. Sometimes yes. these things get leaked, not on purpose, but because someone has just been clumsy. Yes, or careless, yes, yes. Mm. Okay, so now let's move to, you know, uh, at some time goes by and you meet someone mm -hmm. else. Talk to me about the new relationship. <sighs> okay, so in 2019, I got into a new relationship with someone that I had actually known for 10 years. Yes. You know, I had known him for 10 years. Met him through a friend. We had been talking on Facebook. Now and then he'd like my pictures, but he wasn't yes. really in the picture, yes, you know? Yes. So this one time I was at my sister's place. He was very close with the guy that my sister was dating at the time. Yes. And he told me about how he's always liked me. He's mm. been watching me on Facebook. And I had been single for like five years or something. Mm. So I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Mm. Let's try it out. Yes. And how was the beginning of that relationship? Okay, so the beginning of the relationship was fun, just like mm. any other relationship. We're getting to know each other. Yes. And also because this is someone who I, I had known for more than 10 years. Yes. He had yes. known me for more than 10 years. I figured I'm probably safe, yes. you know? Yes. And this is someone from a different race as well. This was a white guy. So I thought, okay, maybe something different will be something new. Mm. You know mm. what I mean? But 
that relationship also moved very fast because mm. we started dating in December. Mm. By January, he had asked me to move in with him. Why? Because I was staying by myself. So yes. I was like, yeah, sure, why not? We moved yes. in together. By Feb, he asked me, um, he proposed and asked me to marry him. Oh, wow. And what was your response? My response at first, I, t- I was like, dude, it, don't, don't you think it's a bit too soon? Like yes. everything is so rushed. Yes. And he was like, listen, we've known each other for more than 10 years. Yes. You know, he's grown with two kids. I have no kids. He's like, I've always liked you. He told me on the first day I went to his place that he loved me. And I was yes. like, whoa, it's like, I always have. Yes. I don't find it creepy because, like I say, this is not a stranger. This is yes. someone who's always liked me. Yeah, so there was nothing at that time which felt like, okay, I need to run. N- no, I'm not okay. going to lie to you, no. I, yes. I just thought, nah, this guy just really likes me. Yes. This guy yes. just really likes me. He wants to show me off to the, to the world. Yes. I'd already made his kids. I love kids, so his kids love me. I yes. loved his kids. Yes. So when did uh, things start going pear-shaped? Immediately, right away... After this guy and I started dating, strange things started to happen. Yes. I started losing friends because people started harassing me on social media. Mm. He started receiving nudes from uh, on WhatsApp mm. from girls I knew, from girls wow. that were my friends. Yes. So there were fake accounts that were created on all platforms. I'm telling you, WhatsApp, Instagram, mm. Facebook, mm. except for Twitter, that's the only one. So there were fake accounts that were created. I was called a slut. I was called a lesbian. People would comment on my posts, telling him that he should leave me. I'm not worth it. He would receive all sorts of messages. I would also receive messages from people threatening my life, people wow. telling me to leave him alone. And one thing I kept saying to him is, I don't understand because your number is not on Facebook. Mm. You were not so famous before you met me. Mm. Why is it now that now that you're dating me, now everybody has your number? And everybody has an opinion. And everybody has yes. access to you. Yes. And I also started becoming very, very sick while I was with this, with this mm. guy. I'm already a petite person. Yes. But I became so sick that there were times where I was paralyzed. I couldn't mm. even walk. Yes. I became so sick that... I used to wake up the following morning and I wouldn't remember anything about the night before. Wow. I even got to a point, we were supposed to get, oh, he, he, so he proposed, we started dating in December, moved in January. Yes. Feb, he proposed. April, he went home to KZN to pay Lobola to my family. Okay. And we were supposed to get married in September. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So you're saying that, you know, you started getting sick. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are some of the other things that you observed? So I, I was getting very sick. Mm. I was losing friends. I also realized that this guy didn't really have any friends of his own. Yes. He literally used to go with me everywhere I went. He didn't have a life of his own. He didn't want anybody close to me. He didn't want anybody close to him. Yes. And he was a very quiet person. But I also started picking up little things, like the fact I told my sister that this guy has another side that nobody knows. Yes. There were times when he would snap, and when he'd snap, he'd become a completely different pe- yes. person, very scary. Mm. There were even times when he hit his kids in front of me. What? But okay. then that wasn't the person that I knew him to be. Yes. So with all of these things happening, was there ever a point where you like, this is not going to be for me? Yes, that was, I believe, in August. Yes. No, bef- before August, actually, there was a time when this guy went out to the mall, to the shops. Mm. I woke up in the morning and I was trying to quit smoking cigarettes at the mm. time. So he would hide my cigarettes for me mm. so that I don't smoke too much. Yes. You know, he'd maybe leave me with one when he goes out. So while he was out in the morning, I was looking for a cigarette. While I was looking for a cigarette, I found his phone recording me. It was hidden. It was hidden in the corner of the table. Wow. It was recording me. And... I spoke to him uh, about it afterwards. I uh, deleted the video. Mm -hmm. I found some other pictures of myself. And I asked him, oh, pictures of myself naked, pictures of myself walking out of the shower, pictures of myself walking out of bed. Yes. I asked him about the pictures and I decided to postpone the wedding, call it off actually, because I felt like if you feel like you you need to record me and see what I'm doing in the house when you're not around, then clearly we do not know each other well enough for us to get married. Well, I mean, the first question I was thinking is, just so we can clarify, you did not take these and send them to him. No, no. These are pictures um, that were taken yes, without yes. your knowledge, without your consent. Because you, you can literally see, like, some of them are from the back, some of them are from the side, some of them are from the bottom of the bed. So you can yes. literally see that this person was walking, this person is not aware. I'm not posing. Yes. You know, us girls, we pose, yes. but yes. I wasn't even posing for any of those pictures. So how did he respond when you confronted him? He said that he needs those pictures for him to masturbate. 
when wow. I'm not around or when he's alone at night, but I'm sleeping next to him. But it didn't make sense. I just felt uncomfortable and the whole thing didn't make sense. I don't really know what to make of it because once again, I had never experienced anything like yes. this ever in my life. So what did you do about it? I cancelled the wedding, like yes. I said. I said, let's call off the wedding. Mm. Maybe we should just slow down, get yes. to know each other yes. a little better. Yes. And once again, I just kept getting more and more sick. And I even asked this guy. I told him, listen, I'm not a very sickly person, but ever since I've been with you, I don't know why, but I keep getting sick. Yes. Why would you want to marry someone who keeps getting sick? Mm. And he'd always say the same thing every time I got sick. He always said... I will always be there to take care of you. Mm. Every single time I had some sort of pain, every single time my throat hurts, every time I was out of breath, this guy always had a pill for everything that was wrong with me. And he, he was giving you the medication. He, he was giving me the medication and I trusted him. Yes. And I, I even trusted him more because every single time he gave me the medication, it would work and take away whatever it is that was wrong with me. So what did you eventually discover? So eventually... There was a night where, the night before, I was with some friends of mine. I, I am an artist as well. Yes. I'm a hip-hop musician. So I had a studio at my house. I had two artists that I was working with. Mm. They had actually spent the weekend there with me. Mm. And the one artist left, my producer stayed. Yes. The night my producer stayed, this guy who was supposed to be my fiancé at the time, he left that night with mm. his friends. He didn't come back. He'd mm. never done this before. Yes. Tried to call him. He wasn't taking my calls. I was texting him on WhatsApp. He's reading the messages, but he's not responding, mm. which is just really weird because that was very unlike him. Yes. And then finally, he came back the following day and he literally, when I opened the door around maybe 10 in the morning or 11, he literally looked at me like he had seen a ghost. And I thought maybe he's just scared, thinking I'm going to be a woman about it. And yes. he shouts, where have you been? All of that. And I was just, I was just chilled. I'm yes. just glad to know that you're safe. Yes. And then on that very same night, I wasn't feeling well. Mm. I wasn't feeling well. I wasn't eating. Something just, for some reason, my appetite, mm. my appetite was just refusing. I just could not eat. Mm. He gave me a pill. He cooked. He did most of the cooking in mm. the house um, because he studied, he studied, he's, he's a chef. So he, he gave me a pill because I didn't have an appetite because he asked me, he kept asking me, aren't you going to eat? Aren't mm. you going to eat? I'm not hungry. I don't have an appetite. He gave me a pill, said this pill is going to give you an appetite. Mm. The pill did not give me an appetite. Instead, I just became really, really dizzy. Mm. I became confused and no appetite. Mm. And then also that night, I saw some blue stuff in my food and I didn't understand what is this blue stuff because I don't know any spice that's blue. Yes. Anyway, I'm, I thought, Ugh, it's whatever. I'm also confused from this pill that he yes. gave me. I decided to go into the kitchen because I'm not feeling well. I don't know what this dizzy is. I opened the cupboard and I found a packet of blue rat poison. Wow. This rat poison had been crushed mm. on the kitchen table. Yes. It was in my food. I confronted him about it and he completely lost his mind. He, in what way? He smashed his phone. Yes. He tried to smash my phone. He tried to smash my PC. He just, he became a completely different person that I'd never seen before. Mm. He said that I was messing with him. He said that he's going to kill me and kill himself. He wow. grabbed the biggest knife in the house and I had to call security. So... Was it at that moment that you realized that he was poisoning you? Not really, actually, because I was still a bit confused at yes. first. I was still a bit confused. And then he started saying, no, I'm going to kill you, kill myself. I'm busy trying to make sense of this whole thing. Mm. Eventually, I managed to get the securities to get him out of the house, locked mm. him out of the house, mm. called the cops. Uh, I, I actually called a lady that I work with because I usually get invited by the Departments of Education, mm. Gauden Community Safety, mm. and South African Police Services. Mm. So I called a lady from Gauden Community Safety. I told her what happened. She, she said she was going to send some of her co-workers mm. to help me move out, mm. you know? Mm. And at the time, he was not in the house. I have no idea where he was, but yes. I was still confused, trying to make sense of the whole thing. I don't yes. understand what is going on. Why is he reacting this way? Yes. So what did you find out and how did you find out what actually was going on? So the following day, the following day, because this whole, this whole thing ha happened in the AM. So mm. after the sun came up, there were people that were on their way to help me um, get my stuff and move out. Um, like I said, he had actually smashed his phone against the wall. Mm. I do not know what it is. I really do believe that I serve a living God. Mm. While I was packing my stuff, something says to me, look down. 
I look down, I see a memory card. Mm. I can see this memory card is probably from his phone. Mm. I decided for some reason to keep the memory card. Mm. I took the memory card with me when I went to my sister's phone. I put the memory card in my friend's phone and on that memory card, I found the most disturbing pictures of myself. That's when I realized that this guy had not only been poisoning me, but this guy had also been roofing me. Wow. He was giving me some sort of day trade drug yes. because there were lots of times when he gave me this sleeping pill or this yes. pill to help me relax. Which actually just knocked you out. It knocked me the yes. F out. And the reason why I stopped taking this pill is because I told him that I'm not comfortable taking this pill because most of the time I'll take this pill Following day, I do not remember anything about the night yes. before. And I'm sure you feel groggy as well when you exactly. come to. Yes. I feel groggy and I kind of feel like we had sex. I can feel it in my body, but I don't wow. remember anything. And I'd ask him, did we have sex last night? Yes. And sometimes he'd say yes, other times he'd say no. But I decided to stop taking this sleeping pill yes. that gives me amnesia because I'm not comfortable with knowing that you had sex with me and I don't even remember. Yes. On the memory card, and how I found that out is because the pictures that are on the memory card are were so graphic, man, they were so scary. It was pictures of me laying in bed, butt naked, um, with were my legs open. Were you conscious? I, I was not conscious. I'm completely wow. out. Yes. My legs are open. My yes. butt is open. There were pictures of me laying on the couch. Mm. I, why would I lay on the couch naked? I'm not that type of person. Like, I'm very insecure when it comes to my scars. Yes. Like, different parts of the house. And I remember there were lots of mornings when I'd wake up and I had scratches all over my body, scratches mm. even on my, on my bum, yes. you know? And I didn't understand. Like, why am I waking up with scratches? Mm -hmm. why, do not, I, why do I not remember the night before? But then I realized this guy was roofing me. This guy would give me this pill. He would do all sorts of things to my body. And... I actually have a bit of memory. Like I have mm. some memories of some of the things. Yes. It's a bit, it's a bit fuzzy, but I remember yes. there were times things happened, man, where I, can't, I don't even know how to describe it, but just bits and pieces of yes. memories. It's the weirdest thing, yes. exactly like how they showed in the movies, yes. where a person is drugged out, they see a bit for a few seconds, and, and the then next they thing, black. Black, yeah, yeah. So when you've now realized all of this, what were you able to do about it? When I realized all of this, fine. First things first, I managed to, I made sure that I got the hell away from this guy. Yes. I went to a police station to try and open a case. Mm. Once again, I don't know what case is this because I felt like also there's going to be a case of attempted murder because this person has been poisoning me. Yes. So the reason that I've been so sick while it's I was this of guy. That. Exactly, this guy mm. was poisoning me so that he could take care of me. Mm. Apparently some sort of condition as well. Something with a message. I don't know. What, I don't know what it's called. What in terms of um, a person enjoying that thing of yes, a person needing exactly. them. Exactly. So uh, in that case of you being incapacitated, yes. being unwell, and they become obsessed with that feeling of taking care of you. What you're describing, that yes. is exactly what it is. I don't know whether yeah. it's some sort of mental disorder <laughs> or yes. or what it is, yes. but where a person will make you sick so they can take care of you. Wow. There've even been movies about a woman yes. who literally put poison in her children's tea yes. so that she can be there to say, no, I'll take care of you. Yes, there have been yes. movies based on true stories of a woman who literally paralyzed her own daughter, gave her pills that were supposed yes. to paralyze an animal. To benefit from, from that, mm -hmm. yes, yes. So uh, what were you able to do? Because you, you went to the police and were you able to actually get any uh, kind of charge against him? Once again, South African justice system failed me. I went yes. to the police station. Yes. I tried to open a case. They don't know what case it is. Mm. Also, they said that I needed evidence. Mm. I went to the hospital, but by the time I went to the hospital, I went to the hospital two days after this whole thing mm. had happened. The mm. reason why it took me so long to go to the police station is because I was scared more than yes. anything. I was scared yes. to even leave the house. I felt like this guy probably knows that I'm at my sister's place. Yes. What if I walk out and I find him standing outside? Mm. So when I, got to the, when I got to the hospital, they said it's too late to take blood, blood tests now. They said the, the blood clot probably would have passed by now mm. because if you were supposed to die, you probably wouldn't be standing here. Yes. So I, uh, I tried to open a case. They said they'd get back to me. Nobody got back to me. Nothing was ever done until I also felt like, you know what, let me just let it go. It Basically, is what it is. Basically, lack of evidence is what, exactly. what they call it, yeah. yes. And they said they were going to go to this person. They're going to lock him up. They, I gave them everything they needed to, to know. I even had this guy's ID number. Mm. I gave them the address where he, prob where he probably was at this time at his granny's house, but nothing was done. So in an ideal world, what would you have liked to have happened? Would you have liked for him to serve time? I honestly would have. 
I yes. would have because I don't know how many I don't know how many women this guy has done this to. Mm. I don't know if, the, if I'm the last woman that he's ever going to do this mm. to. And also another thing that really scares me is the fact that he's got a 15 year old daughter, or he had a 15 year old daughter at the time. Yes. His son was 10. His kids loved me. Yes. There was a day when I almost died with the kids in the house, where he left and went to the shops or something. I was in so much pain. My stomach was all. I was, it was worse than bloated, man. Yeah. I was in pain, I was paralyzed, I couldn't even move, the kids were worried. Mm. And my, well, my sister says that day he actually called her. Yeah. He called her saying, Charlie is sick, I yes. don't know what's going to happen. What does that mean? She also didn't wow. make much of it. Yeah. So I feel like this guy was probably planning on killing me, yes. but he was telling my family that I'm sick so without telling me. Be, be mentally prepared. Exactly. Yeah. Wow, wow. And what was the last interaction you had with him? Last interaction was I actually have a, vo a voice note mm. saved. That's the only evidence I have. Mm. And he sent me, because I even blocked him on WhatsApp, WhatsApp and everything. So he sent me a really long message on, um, it was actually an SMS. Yes. Saying, saying that he loves me, he would never hurt me. Yeah. And he tried to claim that he had actually been drugged by his friends the night before. So he doesn't remember trying to kill me. He doesn't remember him grabbing that knife. He doesn't remember him filling up the bathtub with water trying to kill me. But yes. he, was, he, he, was, he was trying to be smart with me because yes. this guy always came with me when I went to speak at schools. When yes. I speak at schools, I tell children about the dangers of giving substances as simple as marijuana to somebody else, even yes. alcohol, because yes. in a different person, in a person who's not chemically balanced, it could cause substance-induced psychosis. Yes. Meaning a person can literally take one drag of weed, yes. they can have one glass of beer, they mm. could literally go insane. So yes. now he tried to use that and say, it wasn't his fault, he was drugged. He even sent a long message to my sister on mm. WhatsApp. We still have those screenshots admitting what he did, yes. but he says that it wasn't his fault. But now the thing is, this is not something that happened once. Yes. This person yes. had been doing this to me for months, close to a year. Do you believe that he was raping you while you were unconscious? Yes, I do. I yes. do. Because like I said, there were lots of times when I woke up in the morning and I'd feel like he had sex with me. Yes. And also some of the pictures that were on his memory phone, he was even putting things inside me. I don't know whether I was putting a toothbrush or what it was because wow. he had me open and he was putting things inside my and body. And taking pictures. And taking pictures. I don't know what oh. else he was doing. But like I said, yes. I'd wake up with scratches on my body. Yes. You know, just yes. not even knowing where they're coming from. So... How, you know, you've spoken about your organization and the things that you've done in that regard, but how have you been able to get past this emotionally and psychologically? I don't think I have. Hmm. I don't think I ever will. Hmm. The only thing I can do is to try and be the change that I want to see. Yes. The only thing I can do is to hide stopping behind, um, is to stop hiding behind the shame of the abuse. The only hmm. thing I can do is try to create awareness, warn others out there, hmm. you know, hmm. simple things like, when, this guy used to love giving me food. He used to love giving me drinks. I remember even the night before he disappeared, mm. I remember he gave me a beer and this beer had a very funny, bitter taste. Yes. Ngati, almost Ngati Teru Spirit or something yes. like that. Yes. There were lots of times when he'd give me alcohol or a juice that had that taste. I didn't mm. make much of it. I always thought, oh, Charlie, it's probably just you. Yes. Why is this beer tasting like perfume. Yes. So I tell people, be careful. Anybody can drug you. Anybody mm. can be drugged. Anybody can have a roofier day trip drug slipped into their drink. It could be someone mm. you know. It could be someone that you sit in comfortably with at home. Mm. Do you know if he has um, shared with anybody the footage that he had of you? I think he has. Mm. I think he has because the, the pictures on the memory card, they don't say that in the camera, um, in the camera folder. That for, for some reason, they were in the WhatsApp yes. folder. So I feel like maybe he had sent them to other people. I don't know yes. who he was sending them yes. to. And also we discovered after this whole thing, that's when I decided, you know, let me go check what's happening on Facebook. Mm. I went into Facebook to check all the accounts that I had actually blocked all the accounts that had been harassing both of us. Yes. Turns out that every single one of those accounts was linked to his number. So, so that was him. So he faked that entire thing. He faked that entire thing. Wow. And I also know for a fact that he was not working alone. Yes. Because there were times when we were sitting together, yet both our phones were going off. He was yes. receiving messages, I was receiving messages. So it, he couldn't have been doing it by himself. He definitely was not. Yeah. He definitely was not. I mean, I even trended on Twitter. Mm. There's even a newspaper, I don't know if I can mention them, mm. that even wrote a story. Even Metro FM spoke about yes, it. Yes. Because 
I lost someone who was very dear to me, someone I'd been friends with for over 10 years. Yes. For some reason, this guy started harassing my uh, person at the time on, on WhatsApp, telling him all sorts of horrible things mm. about me. He started harassing me as well. Mm. I even took to Twitter saying, somebody, guys, please help me. Somebody yes. tell this guy to leave me alone. Like, why is he harassing me? I'm just yes. trying to be happy, yes. you know? Yes. And I even ended up mentioning that how does this guy think I'm going to cheat on my fiance when my fiance paid 80K for my Lobola and mm. I now trended for that? You know how Twitter yes, is. Yes. I'm, now, I'm not trending for trying to keep myself from cheating. I'm mm. trending now for being this girl that's trying to make other people yes. feel bad because of my Lobola. With everything that you went through, did you ever get an opportunity to actually check that you didn't have any side effects or symptoms from, you know, you being drugged and the things that you were being given? I don't know. I, I, I honestly don't know, but I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. My body hasn't been the same. Yes. My body hasn't been the same since then. Yes. My memory is very bad. My memory is terrible. Yes. Sometimes I'll forget the simplest things, things that I feel I should remember. I still get the same lower abdominal pains that I used to get when that guy used to drug me. So I still have no idea what yes. drugs it was that he was putting into my body or putting into my food. Yes. I mean, I told you I had a voice note where after this whole thing had happened, oh, the fo two days later after I had ran away and yes. called the cops, I tried to get him to admit on the, on the voice notes, he apologized and everything, but I tried to get him to admit what exactly it was that he gave mm. me. Because mm. I felt like if I know what you gave me, then maybe mm. I can get help. Maybe mm. there's some sort of way to reverse it. I became very paranoid because I even read an article somewhere saying that some of these date rape drugs, one of the side effects is that it does mess with your memory. Mm. And sometimes women are not able to conceive after that. So uh, did you ever get an opportunity to consult with a doctor to try and just check your symptoms and the things that you're feeling, the pains, the memory loss, and all of those things? No, th that I didn't do. The only thing, the only time I consulted was when I actually went to the hospital mm. to get the blood test. They checked my heart rate. Mm. They checked everything they could check except for my blood, but they said I was fine. They said mm. I was okay to go home. They said that, yes, rat poison can kill you, mm. but clearly this guy was giving to you in very small doses. Hence, yes. it was just making you really sick. What did the family say about all of this? His family didn't say anything. Hmm. His daughter was 15 at the time, but I gave her a call. I told her what happened because as young as she was, I felt like she needed to know the truth so she can explain to her brother yes. because those kids loved me. I mean, they were already calling me Mommy Charlie. Yes, yes. I told his mom, hmm. I told his cousin. His cousin believed me and she was like, no, this guy is crazy. You need to get out of there. Yes. You need to find some sort of help. But yes. other than that... That's about it. So I just decided to distance myself from him and his family mm. and the and entire situation. Yes, and, uh, and what about your family? Because he had already done Lobola and there were expectations for you guys to be getting married and all those type of things. What did they say when you said, listen, I'm calling off the wedding and this is why? I, I, honestly, I honestly can't tell you I remember what my family said. Mm. I just told them what happened mm. and they were obviously in disbelief. They were like, mm. but this guy was so sweet. Yes. This guy seems to love you. This guy yes. came all the way home, mm. you know? Mm. But at the same time, they obviously knew that I wouldn't lie to them. Yes. I had no reason to lie at all. But yes. I just told them I'm calling off the whole thing. I even have friends who say, no, Charlie, this guy really loves you. Mm. You need to stay. You need to find a way to work mm. through this. Go back. I'm like, go back where? Go back to die. Yes, yes, yes. Sure. After everything that you have been through, uh, what is the biggest lesson that you have learned out of this that people can take away from your story? <sighs> the biggest lesson I've learned, firstly, is... Be careful who you trust. Mm. But the trust thing is also really tricky. It's also really tricky because how are you supposed to know who to trust? Yes. Sometimes the, these images, revenge porn, sometimes these images are not only shared by ex-lovers, sometimes they're shared by friends. Mm. You and I could be friends. I know you have news on your phone, mm. but because I think you think you're better than everyone else, mm. send the news to myself and I can leak them. Yes. So I tell people, take these naked pictures if you want to, but just be careful and yes. also be smart about it. Be careful who you send these images mm. to and cut your face out. Yes, yes. But then people like me, I mean, I've got tattoos all over my mm. body. So if I had a sex tape, for example, even if there's no face, it would be so know. obvious that yes. this is Charlie. Yes. Protect yourself at mm. all times. Mm. And if, whenever your drink starts to taste salty or like perfume, stop drinking. Mm. If you wake up in the morning, you're with the person you don't remember the night before, and you've never been that type of person, no matter how much you drink alcohol, mm. 
know that probably something's probably not right. Yeah. If that, you have that gut feeling as a woman that tells you something's not right, listen. Mm. I almost died because I didn't listen to my gut feeling. Mm. I used to make little jokes, man. I don't know why. Okay, mm. I know now, but at yes. the time, I don't know why. I would say things to him like, oh, please don't ask up this story as me when I, yo, white man, I'm a black girl. Please yeah. don't ask up this story as me. He'd laugh. Um, things like, would be on a video call together, he'd laugh, and then next thing, the smile is gone. Yeah. If, if, if somebody seems like they've got two different personalities... To be careful and mindful. Be careful, yes, because yes. people are crazy out there. Yes, you never yes. know what a person is, is, what a person is capable of yes. until they actually show you. I am very happy that you are at a place where you can speak about your experience, because it's a pity sometimes the justice system is not caught up with the realities of the world. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with the digital era and us now being able to share images and those kind of things, that revenge uh, revenge porn or uh, sharing intimate images, uh, which is what was done of your body and your likeness without your permission at the time was not deemed illegal, is illegal right now. But also for us to just be aware that you can go and open up a case. I'm glad you were able to get a protection order and that it stopped. With regards to the second relationship, it's such a pity that a lot of the drugs that people will use to drug their, their intimate partners are not readily detectable within the mm -hmm. blood, which makes the case not able to really hold. And it's a pity that the onus then sits on the victim to try and say, mm -hmm. let me prove what a person was doing to me. But I'm happy that you're able to be in a place where you speak up for the experience you've been through, that you are pushing to raise awareness, um, that you're giving the talks that you're giving, and that lots of young women and young people can be educated on the realities of, listen, yes, it's all good and well to be in love, but how uh, you can be aware, you can be mindful, you can sort of try and pick up red flags as to some of the things that can happen to you in your relationships. So thank you so much for coming to talk to us. I really appreciate you opening up. Um, I can imagine that it, it might have felt so embarrassing and humiliating and your dignity stripped mm -hmm. of you at the time that it happened. But you're, you're out here and you're speaking about something where, where others might be too ashamed and close themselves off mm -hmm. and pretend like it didn't happen. And you're doing that for the benefit of other people. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, my queen. More than anything, I really do believe that we are in the world to change it. Mm. I keep saying over and over that my story is a story of so many other girls and women. Yes. If me sharing my story can help save a life, then I'm good. Because I know that most women are not able to live after such. Some people mm. don't see a life after such. Some mm. people commit suicide, mm. you know? So if anything happens, happens like, like, if anything like this ever happens to you, get help. Mm. Get help from SAPS. Mm. Get help from counseling. Mm. Mental health is very important. Mm. You know what I mean? People are going through the most in South Africa. Yeah. People are cyberbullying each other, revenge porn, left, right, and center. But all, people also need to know that this is now a criminal offense. Mm. And if you are if you are charged and you are found guilty, you could spend, I believe it's two to three years in prison, mm. or you have to pay a fine of 250 thousand rand. Yes. The world is not such a bad place. It just needs mm. a little healing. But together, mm. I believe we really can make it happen. Thank you so much. Hashtag unpacked with Rilebukhile. Let me know your thoughts on today's discussion. Like I said, it is a pity that sometimes the, the wheels of justice are slow. Sometimes the law takes a while to catch up with the realities of what people are facing. But if we do want it to change, then we need to speak up on those particular realities so we can have a legal system that is protecting us and that is doing something for us. And when I say us, I literally mean all of us, not just the victims. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good night. Next time on Unpacked. We are going to remove you. At the same time, they are putting me in the trips. Mm. At the same time, I'm signing. At the same time, I'm vomiting. I'm confused. I'm sick. Mm. She mm. was told that at some point, after a few years, it will grow back. It's a lie. Wow. It doesn't happen. Mm. So you're undermining the law. You're undermining the hospital. You're undermining the patients.
thank you so much for watching Unpacked with Rilip Khile Mamoja. Make sure you subscribe to my channel where you can get to watch more episodes. But more importantly, you can be part of our online community. Comment down below, share with us who you'd like to see on the show, what story you'd like us to discuss. We love engaging with you. Keep it coming and don't forget to subscribe.